DJ Ferris. Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. Hit me. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up the. Let's get some sports talk. Some of these offseason upgrades or not that teams have made. And I, it sounds like we both agree with Joe Staley out and Trent Williams in with the 49ers. That's definitely an upgrade. It, it is. It's better. Yes. You know, and again, I, we both respect Joe Staley. We realize the great player he is. But, you know, Mike, this is Trent Williams. This is one of these guys that have, ever since this, these problems have a, a, arose in Washington, you've heard me say, this is special left tackle. This is a first ballot Hall of Fame left tackle. He is that type of guy. You know, so I really kind of agree with everything Scott McLuhan said in his little quote. You know, Williams, when healthy and hitting on all cylinders, he's the best left tackle in the NFL. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and I think it is a major upgrade for the, uh, the San Francisco 49ers. And, and another reason to think that, they're going to pick up right where they left off last year as one of the dominant teams in the NFC. All right, Cowboys defensive line. Chris, you've been critical of the defensive performance last year by the Cowboys. Offense good. Defense didn't hold up its end of the bargain for a team that went 8-8. Eight and eight. Michael Bennett, Malik Collins, and Robert Quinn are out. Gerald McCoy, Don Terry Poe, Alden Smith, subject to reinstatement by the commissioner, is in. Do you see that as better, same, or worse? I, you know, it is a close one. I think I'm going to stay around. I'm going to go with same here. I am. You know, first off, uh, the, the key player that was lost there and the biggest name on that list is Robert Quinn. I mean, Robert Quinn is a special edge pass rusher. The Cowboys lost. Yes, they lost out on Robert Quinn. And you got to wait to see how Alder Smith turned out because he haven't played in three, four years. So he got to do a lot of catching up to do once he stepped on the field. He got to get back in football shape and get back used to playing in the actual game. You got to see how he going to pan out. Then you got McCoy. Then you got uh, Poe. You know, hopefully they can stop, stop the run, pressure the quarterback. Hopefully they, them three do what you brought them in to do. Because you lost out on Robert Quinn who was y'all best pass rusher last season in San Francisco. They did host as they stay healthy this season. At, at the left tackle position, they need him to stay healthy to protect Garoppolo. That's all. That's all been playing a part with him. It's just been, been hurt. They just need him to be healthy this season. Because they still be the same team this season. And they just need him to be coming into the season this healthy to stay for a full year. Lost him. You're not going to say like tick for tack, like Alden Smith for Robert Quinn. No, definitely not. Now, listen, with Michael Bennett and Malik Collins, you know, getting Gerald McCoy, Don Terry Poe in there, you know, Michael Bennett, it's towards the end of his career. I, I'm not so sure it's not done. If not, we don't see, maybe we see one more year. You know, Malik Collins, good, not great. So, you know, I don't know if there was – I think they might have improved the interior part of the D-line, but got worse on the edge there, and that's why I'm going to say the same. Yeah, you know, and for me, the wild card in all of this is Alden Smith, whose reinstatement yeah, bid right. is still pending. Um, Stephen Jones told me a week and a half ago that Alden Smith had had his meeting with the commissioner, so we wait. And, and this is one of the problems I have with the reinstatement process. There's no timeline. There's no standards. The commissioner has full discretion, and the commissioner can, can decide whenever he wants to decide. They also have Randy Gregory caught up in the reinstatement effort as well. But uh, if, Alden Smith, if Alden Smith is, I don't know, 75% of the – and we know it's five years – Right. He's probably not going to be 75% of what he was five years ago. But the guy was so damn good that if they can get him back and if they can coax anything out of him, like what we saw early in his career, and he was drafted in 2011. I mean, it's not like it's 15 years ago. I mean, the guy should still have some gas in the tank physically. They get him into shape. My goodness, it could be better. I think that that, to me, the final verdict hinges on can they get Alden Smith back and will he be uh, the guy anywhere close to what he was. All right, the Houston Texans. Out are receiver DeAndre Hopkins and running back Carlos Hyde. In, receiver Randall Cobb, receiver Brandon Cooks, and running back David Johnson. Better or worse are the same? 
Well, it's it's a two for three swap here, right? And you know, because of that third extra player, I'll say the same. I mean, to me, it's like Brandon Cooks and Randall Cobb are almost equal to a one DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, that's really kind of the way I look at it to a degree. Carlos Hyde, who was nice to that football team last year, you know, no, he's not as talented as David Johnson when David Johnson's healthy. Now, that's a big question there. So that's a big question. If they can get J David Johnson to be more healthy this season and be the pro running back he was before he got that wrist injury, before he got that big contract, if they could get him to be that guy again, then it make a big difference with him. Because he could catch out of the backfield. Cooks is a speedy wide receiver that could, you could throw a go route to him and uh, get behind the secondary. Cobb is that solid, over-the-middle type wide receiver that you can rely on. He's a good safety blanket. And um, if you just get them three, play how you want to play them, that's why you brought them in. But if they could get that David Johnson, it will be a big difference for them and hopefully make up for it. I'm staying the same again here. Uh, this is, it's another tough one. I mean, it really is. But I think when I look at Randall Cobb and Brandon Cooks uh, for DeAndre Hopkins, I think two equals one there. And I like the potential of David Johnson and how he'll work in that offense. And he's certainly a more talented player than Carlos Hyde. The injury thing I know is a question mark, no doubt about it. But I'm going to say the same one more time. I'm not buying your two equals one thing unless you're allowed to have 12 guys on the field when Brandon Cooks and Randall Cobb line up because DeAndre Hopkins is that guy who basically gives you 12 guys on the field because you got to use two guys to stop him. And it opens it up for everyone else between Brandon Cooks and Randall Cobb. I don't know that I'm going to be as afraid of the Texans offense as I was afraid of it when DeAndre Hopkins was there. All due respect to Brandon Cooks. I mean, the guy's been hot potatoed around the league. First I hear round you. pick, first round pick, first round pick. Now, oh, oh God, it's only a second round pick now or whatever it was that the Texans gave up to get him. Um, I, I'm concerned about Cook's health. I'm concerned about his effectiveness. He's not DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, no, he's and not. I know D Dave, David Johnson, David Johnson, if we get the guy from three years ago, then maybe it's close to being the same. But I think that the losing Hopkins is too big. I think they're going to be worse. The, All right. The, the, How the, the big thing is, though, it might be a positive in that Deshaun Watson and not every big moment is just looking at one guy. The fact that the d defense might have to worry about more people that's kind of why I said it. But, I mean, listen, everything else you said, you're, not, you're right. No one's messing with Hopkins, so I, I get that. He's clearly better than anybody there. But I do think it's going to make the offense a little more versatile and tough to pin your ears into one guy getting the ball. I don't know if, if, if your kids yeah, had we'll a security see. blanket when they were little and you took it away. It, it wasn't the easiest adjustment in the world, and they don't have a security blanket now for Deshaun Watson. All right, last one real quick. Vikings, Stephon Diggs out, Justin Jefferson in. Oh, I'm going to say worse. I love Justin Jefferson. I do, but, I mean, i got to see him play in the NFL before. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing when you bring in a rookie. you got to see how he pan out in the NFL game. you got to see, can he replace Diaz? Because that was a big hole right there. Once they shipped him off to Buffalo, you had to replace him with somebody that played the opposite of Thielen. And you got to wait and see how he's going to be once he put that uniform, once he stepped on that field, and once he ran his first route against a top corner. You got to see how he's going to pan out for them. That's one thing when you bring rookies in, you got to see how everything is going to turn out. I start to say it's going to be better than Stephon Diggs. I mean, Stephon Diggs is one of the better receivers in all of football. We know what he can do in the NFL. He's a difference maker. You know, Justin Jefferson, I expect him to be. I think he is. He's not exactly the same type of player as Stephon Diggs, but I'm not going to anoint him king over Stephon Diggs until I see him do it on some Sundays first, no matter how much I love this kid coming out of college. And, and I agree with you. We have to see him prove himself. It is a step back, and, and it's going to fall on other guys, I think, to pick up the slack while Justin Jefferson learns the ropes. Irv Smith Jr., the tight end from Alabama last year that was a second-round pick of the Vikings, 
He's a guy to keep an eye on. They expect big things from him. Move him out to the slot. Let him make some, some, uh, some things happen that way. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching.